that be happening? It is. There. Oh, we did it. Thank goodness. You're all okay. I think it's about time you toss that sword aside. Don't you? Now you meant to roll your R's. It's like... I'm not finished yet. Away. There's more of them. You're only delaying the inevitable. Give up and surrender. S silence! You should be the one surrendering. If this commoner's life means anything to you, then enough of this nonsense. Uh-huh. That's... Whoa. Ah! How tall is this room anyway? What? Yeah! <sighs> Fiona! Oh, you are Instructor Nightheart! I'm pleased to see you all again. Major Nightheart. But I'm no longer your instructor. So you should address me as Major Nightheart now. <laughs> How very you, Major. Well, look who showed up to steal all the glory. Good to see you alive, Major Nightheart. Likewise. Fiona, are you okay? It's okay, I'm perfectly fine. Um... Thank you, Elliot. For coming to save me. For being okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy you're okay too. I was so worried. Thank you, each and every one of you. How could I ever possibly repay you? <laughs> We're just glad that you're alright. Getting to hear you play the piano again is all the thanks I need. <laughs> the Lieutenant General should have this fortress under control before long. You can relax, at least for now. With that, Twin Dragon's Bridge fell with minimal conflict. Unfortunately, they were able to... Rescue Fiona, unharmed. Following the battle, the 4th Armored Division occupied the base, and the soldiers who were stationed there were forced to retreat back to Keldic. However, Keldic was ill-suited as a base, and they quickly abandoned it, edging farther south. They eventually joined forces with those stationed within Bereahard, and together they strengthened the city's defences. The 4th Armored Division, meanwhile, chose not to pursue them, electing only to free Keldic. And as another noble alliance force was stationed along the route to Trista, the stalemate between the two armies resumed. Seriously, invest in anti-air. Just saying. Might help you in the long run. Thank you again for rescuing me. I don't know what I would have done if not for you. Never in my wildest dreams could I have imagined Her Highness coming to my daughter's rescue. I am truly humbled. How can I possibly repay the kindness you have bestowed upon my family? <laughs> you needn't repay me for a thing, General. We're all just glad that everything ended without incident. <laughs> Thankfully, yeah. By the way, that was pretty slick timing on your part, Major. 
I thought you'd been acting separately from the 4th Armored Division all this time. Indeed. We were told you were in Western Erebonia. That's correct, actually. I was away getting in contact with the other divisions, the 7th included. Yesterday, however, I caught word that Miss Craig had been moved here. As soon as I heard the news, I hurried here in record time. I wonder why. Aw, you're so sweet, Nightheart. Not at all. I simply did as anyone in my position would. Huh? What's up with those two? Love. He's got the hots for her. I can tell. I mean, it's obvious. Huh? But they've known each other for ages, though. <clears throat> Still, it's unlike you to act on a whim, Nightheart. <laughs> Perhaps it's a sign you're becoming more flexible as a soldier, and I mean that in a good way. I do realize that, but it was in part due to receiving some guidance from a rather peculiar source. And having discovered a way into the base thanks to that, I resolved to make use of it. A peculiar source? Kind of like with us and that weird guy. Do you mean... The Hooded Man? You wouldn't happen to be referring to a suspicious hooded man, would you? As it so happens, I am. Is he an acquaintance of yours? Well, acquaintance is a strong word. It's more as an acquaintance of yours, to be honest, but all right. Suspicious is right, though. Hmm. Now you've got me curious. Well, leaving him aside for the time being, the 4th Armored Division will be assuming control of the Twin Dragons Bridge from this point forward. Leave everything here to us. You need only to focus on deciding your next destination. Should you require any supplies, you may want to stop by Keldic before leaving. Thanks, Dad. We are pretty short on supplies, so that sounds like an excellent idea in my book. While you may have ended up fighting alongside the Imperial Army this time, I do feel that there is significance in you continuing to act as a third faction. I will be wishing you well. Thank you, Major. <laughs> right back at ya. Catch you later, Fiona. Bye! Be safe. Bye-bye! Ah, oh, she's adorable. After saying their goodbyes, Class 7 left those at the Twin Dragons Bridge behind. As per Lieutenant General Craig's suggestion, they chose to stop by the newly liberated Keldic. And while the Courageous was being resupplied, they decided to walk around and check up on the townsfolk. It's a new day, everyone. Keldic, stop over day. Oh, it's lovely here, isn't it? Well, we should be all set up on supplies for now. The townsfolk all seem pretty relieved now that the provincial army's gone too. So glad everything went well. Still have some time left until we have to leave. I know Becky and Rosina are somewhere around here. Maybe I should catch up with them. Kind of curious what the rest of the gang is up to, too. Bonding points, which can be used to trigger bonding events, will be allocated to you on stopover days. To advance the story, choose to board the Courageous at the eastern exit. We see you to bonding points. For the duration of the stopover day, Cadix Town map can be accessed by pressing the square button. Well, it's obvious what we got what we gotta do, like straight off here. Like where is she? Down there. We're coming, Tower! We're coming. There you are. I spoke with the market manager, and he agreed to let us use some of the stuff from the stores that closed down. I normally wouldn't have asked, but George said he needed materials for repairing the ship. When you're acting captain, you've got to work with what you're given. This looks like a bit much for her to carry all on her own. Yes, yes, yes. I can take half of that for you. Actually, I should probably take more than half. This stuff's probably as heavy as you are. There's no way you should be carrying it all on your own. <laughs> well, if you're sure. Oh, since you volunteered, mind doing something else for me too? There's a bunch of unusable stuff here that I thought I'd take for myself, so eh, you wouldn't mind. 
You want me to drag this chunk for you somewhere too? You think you can turn it into something useful, then sure. Reen cheerfully helped her sort all of the usable items from the unusable items, and together, the two of them carried anything worthwhile back to the ship. After that, they took unusable stuff to the highway. There we go, already. This looks like a setup you'd see on a firing range. Aha, uh -huh, that's exactly what it is. This is the perfect opportunity for me to get some practice in. And you know what they say, there's no time like the present. Practice? What kind of practice? <laughs> Just watch. That's an orbital gun, isn't it? A, a pretty big one at that. Sign doesn't look like anything your standard bride for production, though. That's because it was made at ZCF in LaBerle, apparently. <laughs> it's different from your average orbital gun. It shoots art-based bullets. I guess the easiest way to understand is to think of it as an orbital staff, but like, in the shape of a gun? First our Arcus units, now this. Technology continues to impress. I had no idea ZCF was even producing stuff like this. Prince Oliver gave it to you, didn't he? Yep, right before he parted ways with us. It's a prototype too, so normally, the people involved in its development would be able to get their hands on one. Prince must have some connections with ZCF. Huh. Look, he is. I bet Elisa would be surprised to hear about this. <laughs> well, it is a totally new invention. I thought I'd be okay with it because of my experience using regular orbital guns at the Academy. Turns out I was wrong. So, would you mind helping me out with target practice, Reen? Not at all. Can I ask what brought all this on, though? You're already the best backup we could ask for. Seems odd for you to be taking up a weapon now. I was actually a bit perplexed myself when he handed this to me, but I think he realized that I've been worried about my own lack of strength lately. You have? Sorry, I didn't even notice. Oh, it's okay. It's just I've been tasked with looking after the courageous. Can't rely on everyone protecting me forever. And this isn't just some minor clash we've been swept up in either. This is a full on war in every sense of the word. I can't look after myself. I'm just going to end up being a burden. That's the last thing I want. So, can you see why I want to become strong enough to protect myself? This has really been weighing you down, hasn't it? It's not just that, either. I count our saint specifically chose me to succeed him. He's trusting me to fill his shoes. To me, that makes it my duty to become capable of supporting everyone on the courageous. Well, that's more than enough to convince me. If you've got your heart set on this, then I'll gladly help you out. Let's become stronger together, Toa, along with the rest of the Courageous. Yeah. It's gonna seem like the boxes explode. She may be small, but I don't know anyone else who works half as hard as she does. I have to do what I can for her sake too. After joining her practice for a while, Reen leisurely walked her back to town. Yay. Reen and President Toa reached link level four. Art support, apparently. Okay, who's the nearest person? Whoever this is over here. Hello! I can see it in your eyes, young ones. You're questioning my presence here, are you not? Yes. It's not even a surprise, though. Those who have a passion for freedom are guided by love itself. And now the time has come, the time has come, to heal the downtrodden citizens of Keldic with my soothing melody. I insist that you all listen as well. I just thank Adios for allowing us to be here on this day. Now lend an ear as I offer up a most graceful melody for her. Yes... Elliot. Phew, I'm so relieved that Fiona's safe and sound. I shouldn't have to worry about her as long as she's with Dad, either. Yeah, that's no guarantee that she won't run into danger in the future. But next to your Dad's a pretty safe place to be. 
I'm just glad everything worked out in the end. Eh, wouldn't have. If not for you and Valimar, though. And the rest of our classmates, of course. It won't be easy to repay you, but I'll be sure to help out as best I can. Come on. You've been through enough that you don't have to worry about repaying us. Just take some time to rest for now. Oh, I know. While I'm here, might as well go listen to that fiddle player. Yes. Probably won't get a better chance than right now, right? Maybe I should join him, yes. Oh, are you coming too? Sure, might as well. Wide open area over there looks like it. Maybe for a good listening spot. Shall we? We shall. Not bad, wee man. Yeah, music like that is perfect for the grand market. Uh, yeah, and I'm all jazzed up to work twice as hard. Thank you, thank you. Please note that the hat is open to donations. <laughs> wow, he's good. And that performance was something else. Yeah, even I could tell just how good it was. Seems to have lifted everyone's spirits here in the market a little, too. <laughs> you're right. Really is incredible how something so simple can put people's minds at ease. Music really does hold its own unique power, doesn't it? I'd have to agree with that. Once it's like this one, and even our own, really make me realize how amazing music can be. Yeah. I feel like that fact sinking in for me all over again. There are things that music can do that military forces can't. Just like how there are things we can do that no one else can. Rescuing Fiona is a good example of that as any. Exactly. Whenever we're feeling down, we just have to remember that we've got our own role to play in all this. And we'll keep trying to find it, while doing all we can to bring this conflict to an end. Yeah. I prefer a bit more than that. And let's see about Gaius now. Just look at that windmill off in the distance. Amazing, aren't they? Of course, there'd be something to do with wind. I wonder what led people to think of harnessing the wind's blessings like that. <laughs> Perhaps the wind is the reason this market's merchants are as resilient as they are. It's always wind. Gaius seems particularly interested in Keldic's windmills. I suppose we'll spend time with him. And now that you mention it, Mango, Elliot, and Fee were hiding out in a windmill on the highway for a while. We could go and ask the farmer who owns it to let us take a look around if you'd like. I can't think of anything I'd like more. What are we waiting for? Let's go. Of course. Of course. They went to find Mango who in turn introduced them to the farmer who owned the windmill. And once they had his blessing, they headed out onto the East Celtic Highway. That's the one they were hiding out in during their time here. Hmm? Huh? That's odd. The windmill stopped. Yeah, maybe something happened. We should go let the farmers know about it. Hmm. Seems to be a problem brought on by aging. What, you hip? You see that rust on the cog up there? Uh, that's stopping the blades from turning properly. I see. Is it difficult to fix? Uh, not at all. All that needs doing is replacing the cog. It'll be good as new. As it so happens, I have spares here just for times like these, so we don't even need to go anywhere to get them. Oh, no. I just realized I took the stepladder that was here back to the farmhouse. 
I'm not going to be able to reach the cog without it. I'll have to go back home and get it. No, that won't be necessary. <laughs> Reen and I could reach it if we work together, I think. Huh? Oh my. Ooh. Yeah, this is pretty high, all right. You think you can reach it? Pretty sure, yeah. Just, you know, don't drop me. I think I can manage it. <laughs> oh, to be young again. Here you go. This here's the replacement cog. The blade should start turning again once that's in. Just watch your fingers. My hand! It's working. Sounds like the turbines are blowing with the wind again. That would have taken a lot longer if not for your help. Thank you kindly. I mean, it would have taken going and getting the ladder, but alright. Let me treat you to some freshly baked bread for the trouble. It was made with rye that was ground right here in this windmill. Are you sure? Thank you very much. That was delicious. He had another one of the wind's blessings. Mm, eh. Having the opportunity to see a windmill up close was a pleasure, too. Thanks for showing me, Reen. I owe you one. <laughs> Likewise. This windmill kind of reminds me of you, you know? Really? How so? Nothing but wind. A windmill stands tall and dignified. Always in tune with the wind. There's also the fact that they provide for us in inconspicuous ways. I'm kind of like you, guys. Guess I'm just realizing how reliable you are all over again. <laughs> Thanks. I'm flattered, really. I'll do what I can to live up to that image. We can't rely on you all the time, though. It's too much of a burden for one person. So let's do what we can. Together. After observing the windmill for a while longer, they returned to town. Your bond with Kai has strengthened. Up day, up day. Planning on hitting the town, Emma? Oh, hello, Reen. Something like that. I was going to take a little walk over to Lunarian Nature Park. Oh? This wouldn't have anything to do with Celine, and I was sensing the higher elements last time we were there, would it? Yes, actually, she told me all about it. I thought it might be a good idea for me to go take a look for myself. <laughs> it shouldn't be too much trouble for me. The monsters around there aren't especially challenging. Hmm, might be a good idea for me to tack along with her anyway. Yes, of course. I'm more than confident you'll be able to take care of yourself, but would you be opposed to some company? I'd like to see how the park is doing myself. By all means, I'd be happy to have your company. Well then, shall we? We shall. Together, Reen and Emma stepped out onto the highway and walked to the park. Hmm, something certainly is out of balance here. And I can sense the presence of the higher elements as well. Fortunately, their effect seems to be limited to within the park itself. You don't think there could be a cryptid here like Lohengrin Castle, do you? Well, I don't sense one now. The high elements are only present in the park itself, so... I think they're here as a result of the chaos in Erebonia, particularly because this area is close to a spirit vein. But I can't offer any guarantees that the surrounding area won't be affected in the future, though. Emma? Sorry. I was wondering if I might be able to calm things down a little. I think I'll try at least. Please step away. Oh, Spirit Vane, calm the cares of this land by the guidance of my mana. Look? No, unfortunately not. As I feared, my power simply isn't enough to quell a disturbance of this magnitude. 
and Sanine's assistance wouldn't help me do any better. Ah. Oh. Well, at least you tried. Is something wrong? I was just thinking. I bet Vita would be able to do it. With the amount of power she has. She'd be able to handle something like this without even trying. Alright. I've always been following behind her, desperately trying to catch up. I've always admired the incredible talent she has as a witch. No. Admiration isn't quite it. The truth is, I've always had an inferiority complex when it comes to her. I am always comparing myself to her. Always reminded of how lacking I am in comparison. Triple dot. I'm sorry. You've ended up with a weak witch like me instead of a competent one like her. If only I was stronger. As I am, there's no way that I'll ever be able to catch up to her. You keep saying always, Emma. No one's born with the ability to do everything perfectly from the start. Just like with my swordsmanship, there's always going to be someone who has more experience. So rather than beat yourself up for not matching up, you should take it one step at a time instead. One step at a time? Yeah. I will all be there doing the same thing with you. And gradually, bit by bit, we'll all become more experienced and skilled at what we do. It's not something you can do overnight, but one day, you'll be able to catch up with her. I suppose you're right. All we can do for now is focus on the task at hand, and hope that will get us closer. <laughs> I think I was just feeling a little impatient and frustrated. Don't mind me. I don't mind at all, really. We all get that way sometimes. Oh, too right, mate. Anyway, we've come all the way to the park. Want to walk around and relax some? <laughs> that sounds lovely. Reen and Emma then enjoyed some quality time relaxing and admiring the area around Lunaria Nature Park before eventually returning to Keldic. Your bond with Emma strengthened. Indubitably. Right, so I'm thinking we should probably end this part here. In the next part, it's obvious we're going to be carrying on with the bonding scenes. Probably able to get all of them done in the next part. It just depends how long they are, because it's like they vary in length so much. Like Gaius's was just nothing, really. And I'm thinking when we do do the rounds here, we do a non-edit round. Because it's like things have changed, things are different. Like, it, like the situation is very different. Things aren't in the same place anymore, that sort of thing. Like, what's going on with you, sort of thing. Like, there's it's, it's just things are very, very different. Because, you know, it's not under the province's control. The provincial army is control, even. So it's like, yeah, that, that feels more right to me. See, I, it's that sort of thing you get a feeling when you should and you shouldn't. I, I don't know. I don't know how to quantify it, is the best way of putting it. But anyway, yes, that's us done for this part. We'll see you in the next part, and we'll start off with uses here seems to be in the need of a good cup of tea. So see you then. Ta-ta for now.